Tonight, the real life agent who inspired the CBS hit NCIS New Orleans takes us inside a cross country search for the murderer of a young woman in San Diego. It's a special edition of 48 Hours NCIS to catch a killer. Here's a preview. Here we go. Action. Hi, this is Coast Coast Station New Orleans. We're filming for NCIS New Orleans. Harris is up. I'm retired from NCIS. I have 22 and a half years of service with NCIS. You talking about that case you've been working on? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. What's going on with that? The victim was found by a Marine passing by with his son that was fishing that morning and called military police. Marilyn Yvette Allen was originally from Ohio, but over time, she'd become estranged from her husband and children and had started her life anew in the San Diego area. They did some forensics. They did some canvassing of the area to try to develop a logical suspect but the case went cold. There was no movement on the case for five years, but then a woman came forward in Baton Rouge, Louisiana with a story that would change everything. I'm sorry, I, have, I can't even tell you the last time I've ever said his name. Her new sweetheart was Roosevelt Gibson, who had left the Marine Corps so he could return to the Baton Rouge area to be near his family. He eventually proceeds to tell me a story about how he had killed a woman and what he did with her body and so forth. She went to the police, revealing the horrific and crucial details that her boyfriend Gibson had shared about the woman he had killed. So the only way we're going to solve this, if, if Gibson would admit culpability, the only way you're going to do that is to put an undercover agent uh, against him and see if he'll talk about it. I was wearing a wire the entire time, and I was recording the conversation. In their conversations during breaks at work, Wynn sensed he was winning Gibson's trust. It wasn't planned or anything like that, it's just something that sort of happened. There was a lot of anger in his voice, you know, as if he wasn't finished with the situation. And I grabbed her by the back of my head and I was boom! Right up in there for a crack dashboard. It was almost like he relived the entire thing. I didn't think about it at the time, but she really pissed me off. The stakes were rising. How was he going to prove Gibson was the killer? Little did I know it was going to be probably my most challenging undercover operation. What's unique about cold cases, time is your ally. Yeah. Because relationships change. Most people want to do the right thing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Alex Serkin is a producer for 48 Hours. He joins me now. This is so fascinating. How did this case end up on Agent Swear's desk to begin with? Well, it started in San Diego, and it was a cold case. They had no evidence, and, and it was... It was dead, mm. except this woman came forth in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, halfway across the country, and that's Agent Swear's territory. And he, uh, he got the case then when the local police reported to NCIS that this sounds like that, that case in San Diego. And he talked to the agent in San Diego and he said, yes, this has to be the same case. So then Swear took it for, from there. And his brilliant move was, was figuring out the only way they could ever get the perpetrator to uh, to be convicted is if they got him to confess. How do you get him to confess? Only an undercover and someone he would trust. So knowing that this man was a Marine at Camp Pendleton, he went to his best friend, who he knew was also a tough Marine who could relate mm -hmm. to Roosevelt Gibson, mm -hmm. and he went undercover, as you saw. So how long did Swear have this case before this game-changing eyewitness came forward? The case, well, Swear didn't get involved until the eyewitness, the eyewitness came forward, came but there was a period of five years oh. where the case was, they, they had just given up on it, oh. and it was very sad because this woman's death was going to go unresolved. Right. And it was just so fascinating because, you know, for the people who watch the television show NCIS, this 48-hour series is, is part of a six-part documentary on this looking into NCIS. But I'm curious, how, Alec, is NCIS, the TV show, like what you shot, the real deal? The, the stories, what, I guess what I came away with is the, the real agents yeah. that we interviewed for this series are, in a lot of ways, cooler than the ones who are on the <laughs> entertainment TV show. I mean, these are the guys, these are the real deal. They're the ones who actually solved the case. And they're very cool people yeah. in, in themselves. I mean, Dwayne, Dwayne uh, Swear mm -hmm. is beloved on that NCIS set. Yeah. He's a technical advisor, and all the actors are kind of in rever in revere him. They yeah. saw Scott Bakula, the, the, he's a well-known actor, going up, and he clearly uh, loves Dwayne. They all do. Yeah, you can, you can tell from the piece. I look forward to it, Alec. Uh, again, a special 48 hours uh, to catch a killer. Thank you for joining us. You can watch that full episode tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern, only on CBS.